Hi folks, Dave here, AF5DN, and uh, today I'm going to talk about communication errors with your Chinese handheld, or how to fix communication errors. And I've got a Bofang here, and a Osan. It could be others, TYT, Puxon, there's a variety of different brands of the Chinese handhelds, different models, the 5U, uh, the 3UV, are a variety of different ones. They all have the same particular issue. And that is your USB to serial adapter. Now even though depending upon the model you have, the brand you have, the serial end may differ. The common thing is the USB end. And actually inside this little guy right here is a little microchip. And this is the problem that you're going to be having. Alright, so first I want to show you, show you it working then show you what happens when it breaks and then I'll try to show you how to fix it okay so the first thing we do and I'm going to use the uh, Osan here just because I like it I'm going to turn it on there now I've got a uh, just a USB extension cable my computer has three USB ports right here in the, the front of it All right, so now we've got the uh, the connection. <clears throat> Let me get over on the uh, screen recorder, and I'll I'll show you some more there. Okay, let me get this fired up here. All right, so we got the screen recorder going. All right, so here we go. We have the. Uh, the device plugged into the USB port up here and uh, you will see that it shows up under my devices and printers. Now I'm showing this on Windows 7. Uh, the same scenario happens on Windows 8, XP. Um, I don't think prior to XP you'll probably have this problem. But And here's our device, uh, Prolific USB to Serial Port Adapter, COM3. And uh, what I'm going to do is I want you to go into the device manager uh, real quick and then uh, or actually your system settings device manager and let's look at it here and you can see right here under COM ports you see the prolific USB to serial COM port 3. Now I want you to look at the drivers here. Let's go to the properties driver. All right so now installing the software that came with it or the software that you can download for it, you can see that the driver date is 2007 and the driver version is 3200. Life is good. Okay, let's close this all down and we'll open up our OSAN software communication. There's our COM port 3, OK, and I'll hit this and what you'll see down here at the bottom is you'll see a little scroll bar going across the top down here at the bottom. And it'll read success. Succeeded, it says. Very good. Now, I guess they don't have spaces in Chinese, so it's all one word. Read success. All right, so at this point, I can modify this and save it and download it and do whatever I want to with it. Okay, but here's the problem. We're going to come back the next day, and we're going to unplug it for today. Unplug, plug it back in, plug it back in. And you notice right here what it's doing. It's saying installing device driver software. Why? There was no reason to. It already had device driver software. But alas, we'll let it do its thing here. This right here is the the problem. This is this is where it's breaking your system. Okay. Okay, it says it was not installed successfully, so that's kind of weird. So, what I would normally do under this circumstance is I'd open up my system, go to the device manager. There is the device. How bizarre. We'll go ahead and update the driver. Maybe it just didn't pick it up for some reason. Okay, so hey, it's saying it found loaded a device driver and installed it. 
but it still says device cannot start code 10. How bizarre. And you notice it changed the COM port, COM port 4. Well, let's look at the, uh, let's look at the drivers again here. You notice now that the driver date is 2-5-2013 and the driver version is 3.4.48.272. What the heck is going on? And let's open up our OSAN software again and it knows there's no communication ports. Now some of the other software like the Bofang, it'll let you open this up and select a COM port, but if you try to communicate it, it just won't do it. Alright, so the question then is, how do we fix it? How do we stop the problem and how do we fix it? Well the first thing to do to fix it is to go back to the device, um, device manager and right click on this thing and say uninstall just completely uninstall it. Okay. Now once it's gone from the device manager disconnect it from your computer and then go back to the original driver software that came with the unit and run it and it's going to say do you want to completely remove them? Well yes I do. Why not I double click on it if I didn't? How silly is that? Alright. And finished. Now just for the sake of I've had too many weird things with <laughs> Microsoft products at this point in time I recommend you reboot the computer so uh, let's go ahead and sh uh, let's go ahead and do a restart and then I'm gonna pause all the cameras and I'm gonna come back here in just a minute and uh, we'll finish the, the video okay so my computer is rebooted let me recap what's happened so far. I installed drivers, the device worked. I moved to a new USB port, it tried to reinstall drivers, which it should not have, it didn't work. I told it to update drivers, it updated drivers, but it pulled them from the internet instead of off the mach local machine, and it installed a version that was not compatible, so it still didn't function. So then what I did is, in the device manager, while the unit was still connected to the computer, I uninstalled the device in the device manager. And then we'll go to the drivers for the, that came with the device and rerun them. And it said, do you want to uninstall? And I selected yes, uninstall. And then I rebooted the computer. Okay, so now we're ready to do the installation process again. But believe it or not, even though we've went through all of that mess, still somewhere down in the operating system somewhere, it still now it still thinks that it knows what this thing is. So what you have to do at this point is disconnect your computer from the internet. However, you happen to be able to do that. If you're doing it on a Wi-Fi, turn off your Wi-Fi device or disconnect from your uh, Wi-Fi uh, router. If you have a physical PC, you can unplug the network cable. Either of those might be a little cumbersome. I'll show you how to disc, how to temporarily turn off your your uh, your network card in Windows 7. Okay, it's real easy. Down here on the right hand corner, you'll see this network device. If you right click on it and say Open Network and Sharing Center, you then go to this here that says Change Adapter Settings. Uh, here is my local area connection. That's the plug on the back of the machine. I just right click and say disable. If you have anything like this is actually for a printer, I disregard that. Okay, so at this point my computer cannot go to the internet. It has to do anything it's going to do. It's going to do locally. So I merely rerun the driver software that came with the device or that you downloaded specifically for your device and let it install its drivers. It usually goes fairly quickly.
All right. Now I'm going to reattach the device. Now I'm still on the not the first USB port, but I'm still on the second USB port that I plugged it into. Okay. Just going out there and installing the driver software. And again, this is because I've uninstalled everything and reinstalling it. It's like it doing it all fresh again. Okay, so it says it was not installed successful, which means it did not pick up the drivers uh, that I had installed from the original software. Now if that happens, which it's about 50-50 that that happens, what you have to do is while it's connected, rerun, uninstall. Now this is quite a quite a pain, but it's really the, about the only way you can fix this driver problem. And it's uh, and then uh, okay, so that it finished uninstalling. While it's connected, I'm going to reinstall. Uh, but this is really about the only way to solve it. I mean, uh, there's no, there's really no other good method other than from the very beginning after you get it to work always disconnect from the network before you plug the device in. Alright, so let's see if we got any connection here. And I do not, so I'm going to try re Ah, that time to find it. So, it's about 50-50. And it's COM3. Wasn't the first one COM3? And when I moved it, it was COM4? Yes, because uh, I completely uninstalled it, and it's like it's a brand new device that I just installed. Okay, so now I've got it disconnected from the uh, Internet. Well, first of all, let me show you that it's going to work. I'm going to open up my OS on here. COM port, COM3. Okay, read from the device. And there she goes. She's reading away. Read succeeded, all one word, no spaces. All right. So, what happens if I move it now? Now, I'm still, if you look down here in the bottom right hand corner, I'm still disconnected from the internet. I'm moving to a third COM port. Hey, it found it. What the heck? COM4. Okay, let's look at it. There it is, COM4. Let's see if my OSON will see it. Ah, there it is, COM4. And will it read? Read succeeded. Okay, that works. Let me put it back on the original COM port and let's see what happens. Or the original USB port. Five, three, four, five. Makes sense, right? Let's see if my software sees it. There it is, COM5, son of a gun. Okay. Read. Read succeeded. All right, so I've successfully been used, used COM3, COM4, COM5. I'm going to reconnect to the internet, open network sharing center, change settings, right click, enable my network. Okay. Now what I want to do is I have a different, I have a different uh, USB extension that's going around behind the computer. I'm going to break it again. Installing device driver software. Oh, 
taking it a while. Mm, not good. Never a good sign. Was not successful and there's no comp board assigned to it. Okay. So basically here's what you gotta do. If you get in a situation where your COM port no longer connects, turn off your internet connection, uninstall it from the device manager, uninstall the original manufacturer's drivers, reboot the computer, either reinstall the device uh, drivers from the manufacturer and plug the unit in, or plug the unit in and reinstall the device driver software. One of those two. It depends upon how your machine is set up, which way that'll work. But then any time after that, any time after that, you want to plug your unit back into your computer, I don't care which COM port it is or which USB port it is, disconnect from the internet before you plug it in. Once you plug it in, your computer recognizes the device, assigns a COM port to it, then you can turn your internet back on and continue with life as good. All right. I hope that helps. Uh, I've got a couple questions uh, on that in, in some of my other videos and, and private messages. So I hope that kind of helps. I know that's been a little bit lengthy, but uh, uh, once you actually do it once or twice, it actually becomes pretty easy. So I appreciate your time and watching, and uh, thank you very much. I'm Dave, AF5DN.